Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. In the last um, post on my uh, website, paulbeckwith.net, I talked a little bit about the AGU Science Conference, which I'll be attending. If you haven't seen this video here, Unprecedented Jet Stream Crosses the Equator. I did this video about a year and a half. It went viral, I don't know, it's about 450,000 views or so on. Um, right now, if you look on Earth Null School, you can see the jet stream um, is zipping across the equator in multiple points. And uh, there is a risk of a state shift or a uh, crossing a threshold in the high emission scenarios and having very strong winds called equatorial atmospheric super rotation, which would kind of rewire the atmospheric circulation system and, and change our life significantly on the planet. So I covered that in this video. Um, as I mentioned, um, next week I will be attending the AGU, American Geophysical Union, science conference. So let, I'll explain a little bit about um, how these conferences work and compare the AGU to the recent uh, COP23 um, policy and decision maker uh, con conference, if you like. Um, in Bonn, uh, Germany. I attended Paris in 2015 and Lima in 2014. Um, didn't attend Bonn myself, but I'll, I'm intending on um, going to the, uh, that, the COP next year, the COP24 in, in, in Poland. Um, so I head to New Orleans on Sunday. Um, hur hurricane season ended November 30th, so it should be okay. Shouldn't be any storms there, although we have had storms, hurricanes in the Atlantic Basin in December. Um, I think there's about a dozen of them or so over the years. Um, but it does look like uh, we might be getting some snow in New Orleans on uh, Monday. So, you know, this maybe the snow will be following me from as I head from Canada from Ottawa down to New Orleans. Okay, so the, uh, the AGU fall meeting and in New Orleans. Um, if you just Google AGU 2017, you can get this website. It's fallmeeting.agu.org slash 2017 slash um, or just Google uh, AGU 2017 and you can get this uh, get to this site. You can read a little bit about it. So it's the largest earth and space science meeting in the world. Um, once a year, it occurs uh, to, uh, there's a lot of, it's basically a conference for scientists. Uh, the pursuit of high quality science, knowledge, and a more sustainable future is the goal. Um, and uh, 20,000 oral, so that's spoken and poster presentations. There's keynote lecturers, there's lots of journalists, scientists, government and corporate leaders there, and so on. So. What is the AGU, American Geophysical Union? Okay, over 60, it's a member of geophysicists. Geo is the Earth. Physicists study the physical nature um, of the planet and other planets. 62,000 members from 144 countries. Um, so it's to spread um, the organize and disseminate scientific information in the interdisciplinary and international field of geophysics. So there's four main areas. There's the atmosphere, the oceans, the solid earth, so on the surface of the earth and within the earth, and hydrologic, anything to do with water moving on the surface, oceans, lakes, the hydrological cycle. There's also space sciences, the other planets. Okay, so a little bit about this organization. It was founded in 1919 by the National Research Council in the U.S. Um, and uh, basically there's, you know, lots of different in subjects that are covered, like astronomy, geodc, which is measurement on the surface of the Earth, geology, meteorology, all about weather, oceanography, seismology, uh, magnetism, electricity, tides, volcanology, all of those different things. The first meeting conference was in 1920, 25 people attended. Um, the, me the membership numbers have grown rapidly. So um, 62,000 members as of 2013. Okay, there's lots of publications. 
from the AGU in journals and so on. One of the things that was controversial with the AGU is the uh, is some of the supporters, there's different medals and things, awards and so on. Um, okay, I'll talk about the controversy in a minute. Um, 11 sections. Um, okay, so I've mentioned these, some of these already, atmospheric sciences, biogeosciences, biology on the earth, geodc, geomagnetism, paleomagnetism, electromagnetism, hydrology, ocean science, planetary sciences, seismology, space physics, uh, tectonic physics, volcanology, geochemistry, and petrology. This is basically buried uh, fossil fuels. Um, and there's different focus groups and so on. So normally they meet in San Francisco every December, but there's renovations on the conference center. So this year it's in New Orleans because of these renovations. And in 2018, next year it's in Washington, D.C. Um, there was... Um, so there was some study done that because it's always in San Francisco, people have to travel a long way to get there because it's on one coast. And if it was in Denver, if it was in a more central location, the AGU emissions of people going to the conference would be down by 7.7%. There was a study. Um, they have policy statements on climate change saying we need to address it. They should be a lot stronger. Um, they were updated recently. Uh, but they're still not strong enough. And they do get money. I mean, one of the controversial things is they get, um, they get gifts of over 100,000 from ExxonMobil, IODP, Nature's Own Individuals. So this is controversial. Uh, 100, there were 100 scientists who wrote a letter saying they should not accept money, for, cut all ties to ExxonMobil who, and other companies that foster climate misinformation. The board met decided that they, there was an unequivocal evidence that ExxonMobil was continuing to give climate misinformation. So they didn't want to make a short-term statement. They wanted to engage the energy industry over the long term. So they said that they'll keep getting the funding from there. If somebody's giving you money, it's hard, hard to turn them down. I'm just letting you know. Um, so that's, a, that's controversial within, within the um, AGU. Um, in the last meeting, last year, there were about 24,000 attendees. Okay, it was the 49th year. Um, 20, over 20,000 oral and poster presentations, keynotes, etc. Okay, um, and this was written at the time. Um, of course, this was December um, of 2016, so we know what happened in November of 2016. Um, and a lot of people there were very, a lot of scientists were very worried about the cuts that were to come. So they had rallies um, about uh, the importance of science. You know, it was basically the, the meeting was had a, there was a chilling effect from from Trump. The Trump uh, with Trump set set up to become president at that time. There was a chilling effect on environmental policy. Okay, we got twenty thousand Earth and space scientists all worried about the future of employment. Um, you know, it, with, with the new government. Um, so there are all these different protests and so on. Um, there's a legal team um, that goes to the conference and scientists can go and talk to them to get information about how to defend themselves. Of course, Michael Mann, you know, was, um, was her, there, there, was, there was harassment and suits over his research and senators were requesting all his email and stuff. So. He had legal help, I think, from them. I think that's one of the reasons why the group set up and, and so on. So, um, okay, so that was last year's conference. Other large conferences that are occurring are the EGU. This is the European version, um, not as big, not quite 15,000 scientists, 107 countries. Interestingly, 53% were under the age of 35. So lots of young scientists there. Um, and this was the breakdown. This was in, this was in um, Austria, I believe, uh, Vienna, Austria. So, you know, most, this is the statistics, a number of um, German scientists, 2,356, the UK next, so lots of Europeans, and then the US, 900 plus scientists, uh, 222 in Canada, and it goes down. So that's sort of the breakdown in the EGU. Now, 
compared to the COP23, okay, so the COP23, these conference of parties, the IPCC conferences are a bit different. Um, it's not, it's mostly not scientists there, it's policy makers, it's people representing governments. Okay, so um, in terms of COP23 in Bonn, so this was just before the conference, I believe, uh, November 6. Okay, so the conference, normally it's in December, but it was pushed to November. Um, Fiji was hosting it, but they didn't have any site in Fiji to have all these people. So, um, it was, so, so Germany took over next to the UNFCC, um, next to one of their offices. Um, so there were 11,300 participants on behalf of countries or parties. In Paris, there was 15,000. Um, plus, in addition to the 11,300, there were 6,176 attendees. These are people that represent UN bodies, specialized agencies, intergovernmental and non-governmental organization, the NGOs or environmental NGOs, plus 1633 journalists. So you add that up, it's about 19,000 people at the COP23. Um, Paris was about double that. Par Paris was almost 40,000 people, 35 to 40,000 people. Okay, now this is really surprising to me. Um, if you look at the breakdown of where delegates came from, what countries, the top five countries in terms of number of delegates they sent were African countries. Ivory Coast, Cote d'Ivory had almost 500 participants. This is insane. You can tell that the Cote d'Ivory, their entire climate change budget went just to sending people on a vacation to to Bonn, to Germany. Um, next was Guinea, 355 people. Um, in Paris, Guinea had 398 people, only smaller than Morocco's um, at, um, at, the, at, the, at the COP21. Okay, um, and then the rest of the top five was Democratic Republic of Congo, 340, Congo, 308, Morocco, 253. This is nuts, right? I mean, why these small countries in Africa that are, don't have anything to do really with causing the problem? I mean, where's China and where's India? Um, where are those countries? We'll, we'll look at the breakdown. I mean, there were other sizable delegation, uh, delegations from different European countries. Germany was six at 230 and so on. Even the, the U.S. had 48 in spite of, uh, you know, Trump. Trump's uh, election, Canada had 161. I mean, this is absurd. Like, these numbers are, are, are ridiculous. You know, you can just see, you know, why do things not get done at these COPs? I mean, these COP mechanisms don't make any sense. They're not solving the, the, uh, pr the climate problem at all. Um, some CO2 emitters, big emitters, like Indonesia, Brazil, Japan, China, and Russia, they had, they had delegates there. Um, and uh, so anyway, this is, uh, you know, this is, this is a bit crazy. Um, this, this shows you a map. You can click on the country, I believe, and see. Um, let me go back here. You can click on the map and get uh, information on, okay. On, on what's going on. But this is a breakdown here. So Cote d'Ivory, Guinea, these are all African countries here. And then there's Germany here, hundreds and hundreds of people. Um, you can look at the gender balance and um, it's, it's mostly, uh, it, it's 62% male, 38% female. Okay, so it's very lopsided that way. Um, okay, so this is a, this is a problem. This is a problem, but I mean, why on earth would the African countries need, need so many people attending these COPs? So obviously, you know, it's become a bit of a farce in, 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 in my opinion. Um, okay, so this is a little bit about the gender balance. There's also a gender imbalance in the American Geophysical Union, um, both in awards and stuff. And here's this paper that was done. It's about, uh, 70, about one in five is female um, in the AGU membership and also in the conferences. Um, so this is a problem. Thank you.